Wiggle Wiggle Like Hello and welcome to my store. Yeah, hello and welcome. <laughs> so this deer storm. Uh, uh, tell me about how it went about because the first time you told me that uh, Wargaming arranged it, but not this time. Uh, yeah. So the first show match we played, it was like uh, first we had Absolute Supremacy was the tournament called for like five thousand dollars on on our server. Which would allow you to play a show match against the Russians after the Absolute Supremacy, obviously. So we won the Absolute Supremacy on the EU server after like winning 4 0, I think, in the final, or 4 1, or something like that, against some Polish team. I don't exactly remember the name. So then we had like one week to rest before playing the, uh, the Russians. But the first time the thing was like, we. Wargaming organized, uh, Wargaming had uh, BGL finals during the finals of this tournament and yeah. basically the players you take in the tournament will be playing the show match. So basically we had to play main like with not most of our main players. So basically we had like a lot of players uh, which were not allowed to play just because Wargaming has always organized the things really badly by by having the LAN finals on the same day as the finals of the tournament. So basically, oh. we went to play against the Russians with like our second team. I mean, how first, how second team, let's say it like, let's say it like that. And yeah, we won the first one. We played like against the Navi and Tornado guys. I think this was like the the first team we, we faced, like this uh, Korn. It's called Korn, by the way, not K K O P M or however, however yeah. they are calling it. And the second time, because the Russians wanted a, let's say, like a rematch, and like after like a year of like they them building their clan, having success all over the like tournaments, global maps, and stuff like that, like they were basically winning against everyone. And before, also an interesting fact was that they made a show match against like the second, let's say, like that top Russian clan. Yeah. And they won against them 7-1. Uh, 7-1, so we... They kind of fought, they kind of fought. It's uh, For them, it's not. It's gonna be easy against us, because... I mean, for Russians, every, everybody thinks like the EU server and... Uh, it's like really weak, even though I watched all the games before we played them, and we kind of knew they are really weak tactically. We, we were only worried about one thing before the match, it was that... I haven't played for five months, so my reactions as a field commander were not on point. So I had to basically come out with something new, so we can be, so we will be, so we can be able to win against them. So basically, that's why I was preparing like most of the stra strategies to say like that, mm -hmm. together with insane because um, the kills are. This was another problem that we had. The kills are had. Well, wasn't able to pra pra like participate in trainings, in making strategies and stuff. So basically, we ha I had to make it really insane. Stefan and Shokish, like we, we, those were the four, gu four guys helping me doing the strats. I mean, I didn't make the strats all well about for this because uh, I'm still like how to say not satisfied with our performance. But let's talk about this later. So. Uh, basically, the man, the streamer, and one of the like most iconic players on the Russian server. He's called Lefsha, even though it's like pronoun. It's like written in English. It's like uh, with like L E B W A, like Levwa, but it's, it's called in Russian. It's called Lefsha. You you like read it like Lefsha. He's yeah. like one of the most famous streamers and iconic like people on the Russian server who played for. For Navi, which is like the most successful team in BGL, or was, I don't know how to, now with the tornado, it doesn't matter. So basically, he contacted us that he wants a rematch, and the bad thing about it was that because uh, the Russians had no, like, how to say, it, uh, they didn't have a comp competition on their, on their server. So they wanted to fire us again to prove everybody they are the best, like in the 50 team format and stuff. So basically they contacted us and uh, we agreed to play against them because uh, we kind of 
we we like to play uh, like take a challenge to like any clan which thinks is better than us is better than us uh, basically uh, a fight between uh, the servers is like also we we would take the challenge any day yeah because we want to prove that the EU server is on the highest tactic while tactic uh, tactic wise level in if, if it comes to 15v15 format so basically he, he wrote to me and he's like but there won't be a prize pool like that was the only thing which i was worried about to motivate players but once like i told them we're gonna play the russians like everybody was motivated to play and nobody cared about the price it was all about like the only the only prize you would get from the margin was i would say pride yeah because, the honor. yeah and all the how do you say all the reactions from all the fans or all the people that watch and to satisfy all of them that was the biggest prize for us to make them proud that still the EU server is the best in that's what we wanted so as I said in the beginning uh, the most worried thing about it I didn't play for five months Ducky, Ducky the kills are what wasn't able to like uh, didn't play for like one month he had some real life issues which he had to fix yeah so we, we were in trouble when it comes to like uh, preparation even though I had a lot of motivated people with me to make like most of the strategies you saw on Emelsdor, on Ensk, on um, let's say Stats, but Stats wasn't fully mine. I, I take the credit only the, the stats that I made fully myself, which are which are Emelsdor, fans. let's say Cliff even though we made some changes, then, but Cliff like I can't really say we played something really special even. Because the Russians like played something, let's say, of a level of a 1000 W8 clan. Doesn't matter though. Um, so basically, he contacted me. He said there, there's not going to be a prize pool, but there would be a lot of people watching it. Last time we played, there were like 50,000 watching us. Interesting fact, by the way, about the match is at the end we had like 120,000 like, uh, on it, like watching the match. Uh, yep. Like which is, which was more than the grand finals, but that's mostly because of all, of all the like Russian streamers we had like insane amount of followers and subscribers and say like that. Yeah. So also all the streamers we which who were streaming the who were streaming the match were there by their own will. So basically nobody was like paid or forced to come or anything they all agreed to come and help and so everybody could watch the match it was like everything was organized really cool really well then it just came then the next thing was he want he uh he told us about the match like three weeks before the match yeah the next thing was he the, we picked the maps one week before the match so this time they could prepare because the last time their excuse was that they could not prepare for us and we were prepared for them even though we didn't make a single a single training or prepared anything for their match because we didn't have a single clue what are we gonna play, what maps are we gonna play and stuff like that. Even though if you watch all the Russian like commentators from like Star Ladder and stuff, they were all saying that we prepare one, one week and all of that which was complete, let's say, BS. Basically, nothing of that happened. We just like played our own game, and that's it. Never prepared for the first match, but this time we wanted to like prepare really well. Like, I wanted to win decisively. Let's say seven one, seven two. Like, I knew we we're gonna lose some games. Like, especially with a team like ours. Let's say uh, I can even say names. We had Breakneck, Positive, uh, Deha. Uh, Ilian and many like players like this who are not Converse players who are not in, into 15 15. I mean, they are all okay great players, but they don't understand the format that well. Even though I was really surprised how well some of them played, like uh, the thing was that uh, we were we would really we would be we, would, we were really bad as a team, we were really bad at decision making, we were really hesitating before that because we 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 played many strongholds before the for the actual match with all the people and it was it was really bad in the strongholds uh, communication was really bad our like let's say um, decision making was really bad our field like calls as field commanders were also not that good uh, it was like but i knew like kind of that 
it's always better to lose in like preparation than in the Omar. Sometimes if you're winning way too much before the like during your preparation, it's sometimes actually worse than losing. It's kind. Of, well, no, I no, I mean like yeah, uh, like they were winning a lot before the yeah. You are right. So they think they're very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean they are cocky for a reason. Like they they. The Russian teams are the most successful in VGL, even though the story on EU server is different, a bit different. Because yeah. not, not many people can invest the time and play play the game for like uh, full, as your full time job with the money they they offer in VGL. Because the no. money are not that good for an European guy, but for a Russian guy it's totally enough. So that's the reason most of the EU players like really great players will never ever play VGL but I mean we still have really good VGL players but that's one of the main reasons which we cannot compare to the Russian because obviously if you're if you're Russian I mean if you live in Russia not obviously have to be Russian or like Belarus or Ukraine mm -hmm. playing playing VG, playing uh, World of Tanks professionally will benefit you more than than being like, but then living, for example, as I do in the UK or in Germany, most of the people which are doing that on who are doing that on you are doing it as a hobby. So and you can actually make a living out of in Russia and not in the UK. Yeah, yeah? yeah. yeah. well, yeah. you can make it. You can still make it if you're like winning first, second place. But you, you need to invest uh, insane amount of time and try really hard. So like, really, it's really a task which. It's, it's really a decision to make, like a hard one. Yeah. But, but also about the match, like uh, before the Russians, we were like almost one hundred percent sure we're gonna win the match. I mean, we were, we didn't even expect we we're gonna make so many mistakes because we we watched uh, their games, their show match they did against the second best Russian clan or like the top clan, Russian clans. Like something between us and CSA MVPs or something, or go in. Uh, we watched their games and we kind of knew they're really weak tactically. And so we were kind of like, uh, how to say, self confident when we came to the match. But a few things surprised us. Let's say, uh, I mean, losing Murumhanka didn't surprise us. I called it <laughs> before we even played the bubble if we're gonna lose it because the strategy that some of the FCs made was really. <laughs> Let's say relying, not relying on much, but that doesn't matter. Uh, like, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, we were so confident we're gonna for, uh, win on maps like Prohorovka, like Himmelzov, like Ansk, like Ruinberg. This is where I wanna make a point. Ruinberg was one of the maps we were supposed to win, but we got really hard countered. I even watched the rewatched the restream and they knew how we are playing on Rimberg. I guess they watched some of our games and they fully countered us. Plus, yeah. plus, many streamers and uh, were asking why did we send the 50 beat in the bill? Why did we uh, why did we make the, all those moves instead of playing passive? I mean, we should have played passive against the lineup, but <laughs> but yeah, that's like the logical thing, but. If you look at the lineup, they have an RT, they have a light, they have mediums, and they have a, like let's say, and they have a TD. Basically, if you have this lineup, you you are supposed to, let's say, supposed to go zero line, the village on the river, let's say it like that. Yeah. Because you cannot utilize your RT if you go to city. You cannot utilize your TDs if you go to city. You t the TD. So we were one hundred percent sure. They're gonna go towards the village, and exactly the opposite happened. And that's the lo we lost the game because we were leading like I think it was like three one or something, and we were like allowed to make mistakes, mistakes let's say it like this. So we were so sure like the they're gonna go zero line, and we had the perfect strat to counter zero line and everything. And yeah, that was the mistake we made, and we lost all of our 50 bees. Then we were forced to make a counter push so we can get back to like decent positions. We got into a crossfire, basically they played a nonsense which will never ever work on the EU server especially because EU servers have like uh, have like better understanding of the game and bring heavier lineups but yeah we fall into that just because of our own like let's say self-confidence 
and we were so sure they're gonna outplay like uh, as I said zero line so that's the that's the map we lost uh, that we should not have lost like we were counting 100% we're gonna win on it so basically we were counting on Cliff, Proho, Himmels to win, Runberg and Stavs to win surely and then we were like ah we will just finish it you know uh, also we have a really good Sunderbird we have a really good Sunderbird strat but we how to say we felt it decision decision wise we played that strat uh, a tournament ago it was yeah. like a seven thousand dollar tournament we played it like uh we played it there and it's like it's like maybe the most optimal thing you can do at Sunderbird and we totally messed it up i won't even comment what kind of decisions we made like totally <laughs> yeah that's what exactly what i was afraid of is gonna be the communication and the decision making of some of the players who never played this and yeah, they basically we didn't stick to the plan. That's what happened. That's one of the maps we should have win. Also, almost one hundred percent. Especially when I saw on the replay what they played. Like incredibly stupid. Let's say it like that. But yeah. So what can I what what I can say from the match is uh, we played really bad. We still won though, but we didn't face. A really good plan that's what i would say they uh like tactic wise but indeed indi individually they were really good they were uh, out killing us and yeah there, there were some situations like that if uh, me and the killer didn't stop playing like blacky for a month me for five months it would be a totally different story in my opinion i would say like seven three or something would be the score for us but yeah it's always something happens but it's at least we win like that's the good thing well, it's two two zero to you now, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, like we won't have really much problem if they keep on playing like that tactic wise, but I guess they will get better sooner or later. So there will be a third match, or what? Mm, yeah, they were asking for a rematch after that, and we said, yeah, sure, just tell us time and stuff. So that's well, all about it, look, I guess. Looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it, I guess. If you have yeah. any questions. No, thanks a lot. I really oh, appreciate right. it. Yeah. English one with a Russian one, but man pulled up in the German one. Two four fours in a four-door truck. There's one on the right, on the left. There's one. We don't wait for the.